So we're back in the prison. We're rolling some dice, if you remember, against some dude. Um, last time we picked six, you know, because they rolled a six. So I was thinking like we could get a rematch, but all the other choices seems to indicate that we lose. Um, but let's pick them anyway. This time we're gonna pick number five. The dice's face revealed to be number five. The result was five, uh, five, huh? Five. Just one more step. And I could have brought this to a draw and rematch. But now I will not attain anything. I began to hate myself. I've always been like this. Always so close, but fail in the end. It's no use. How much longer must I tread the loser's path? Always second place, you know, never first. But they always say that people who are in second place, at least in like um, Olympic competitions or whatever, they're like usually more depressed, you know, than people who are in third place. This is like you're so close, but you you still couldn't get it, you know. That that makes that makes you even more frustrated, you know. So close yet so far. But all right, number five. Who is number five? The fifth eye. This gal. All right. Air buns? What do you call it? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, that girl, beloved by misfortune. Crawling through the abyss, wandering in search of salvation. You're crawling through the abyss, gotta make sure you have the, the abyss walker ring, you know, otherwise you insta die. No, um, leading you to hell. Where are you going? I'm going to hell? I guess we're going to hell. Now, the die is cast. Yeah. Time to die. I'm just trying to think. Um, in, in the last round, did we always die? I guess technically we didn't always die. Sometimes, again, it's like weird, you know, surreal ending where like you end up in a mental asylum or something. So you don't always die, but most likely you do. Or someone dies anyway. But here we go again. Number five. My name is Hetero. I'm just a normal second year student attending a private high school. Yet again. I don't have any particular skills, my grades are merely average. I'm one of those people who are lacking personality and individuality. Speaking of which, right now my classmates are racking their heads over their career paths after graduation. We're still in second years though. I think it's a bit early to be thinking about our future. Everyone's studying so serious, and no one's stupid enough to do anything to stand out from the crowd because they're worried about getting a black mark in their school report. I'm the same, but I don't think there's any point in thinking about the future. Anyways, I don't even know where to begin to think about the future. Therefore, I'll just live each day as it comes. Today, tomorrow, and certainly in the years ahead. Alright, so after surviving the last route, you know, after my girlfriend got stabbed by this other, like, you know, psycho stalker, um, you know, I just kind of continue to live my life, you know? <laughs> anyway, now, before entering the school building, I glanced at the flower bed to my side. It's uh, kind of a habit I've always had. Because I feel like that person's always there. Huh? You're not here today. As usual, the flower birds have filled with a huge amount of pink flowers. Thanks to that person's constant tending, they're looking good today too. I don't like to tinker with the soil, so I can never do what they. Uh, I can never do what they do. While thinking of such things, I found someone who was curled up in a small huddle like a pill bug. Ah, so you were here after all. You're done with watering today, aren't you? Like the pill I guess they're crouching. Yeah, they're like you imagine like someone like like crouching, watering the plants. Uh, the one crouching in the corner of the flower bed is her. Ah, oh, good morning, Metarokun. When she stood my uh, when she noticed my presence, she gave me a cheerful smile. Mm, 
Are you finished taking care of the flowers yet? Well, I'm done watering already. I was just looking at Mr. Ant carrying food to their nest. She says that it loses her mouth into a giggle. Ah, that's so silly. If she didn't act so childish, she'd be just be uh, plain cute. Such a silly thought popped in my head. I mean, isn't the... I mean, especially in anime. Isn't the childishness supposed to be part of the charm? You know, she's cute because she acts like the infantile, you know, like, uh, you know, baby. That's the whole point. It's like a weird culture surrounding that where, like, women, you know, in, in Japan, they have to act all cutesy, like a baby. And that's kind of the point. I don't know. I mean, I'm not... 100% against it because I do find that cute but I don't know uh, anyway uh, uh, Rodo Rodo ah, I don't know how to pronounce that uh, Rodo de Hedron Ro, Ro, Rodo de, he, de Rodo de Hedron Re, Ro, Google Rhododendron 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 flowers Rhododendron flowers have five petals and they have such a beautiful pink color, aren't they cute? Oh, by, and by the way, her name is Psycho as well, by the way. All, like, all the girls named Psycho. Uh, what do they mean again in the language of flowers? Do you know, Metoro-kun? I forgot. She was absentmindedly muttering something incomprehensible again, so I tapped her lightly on the head as usual. I punched her in the head. That sounded like a, like a very strong hit. Uh, ah, it hurts. Yeah, hey, Metoro kun, what are you doing? That's mean. This girl holding her head and pouting is Psycho. Psy as in calamity, Ko as in child. Put them together, it's spelled Psycho. Alright, so it's another Psycho, but you know, the, the, the name means something different. What an ominous name. I'd like to see the face of the parents who gave her that name. Well, that's what I thought at first, but I'm used to it now. I've been seeing her since the school year started. It was a day just like today. I was watching her uh, watering the flowers in the flower bed when she suddenly called out to me. The day I arrive uh, at school earlier than usual, or that day I arrived at school earlier than usual, one of the girls was watering the flowers in the flower bed near the uh, school gate. She was all alone, holding a watering can in her hand, but she had a happy expression on her face. There's no flowers in the flower bed. I'm sure they've only just been planted. A small rainbow was formed by the water coming off the watering can, sparkling and shining in seven colors. She waters the seeds, not knowing when they will grow, and is excited about the day when they will finally bloom. I can't help but stop and take in the scene. Um, flowers, do you like them? Now this is bad. I didn't mean to get involved, but she approached me. I didn't really want to get involved with people, so I gave a curt reply. No, not really. For some reason, she smiled when she heard that. It must have been a few months since that day. I'm not in a romantic relationship with Psycho. We're simply friends. Just friends. I'm just going to friend zone her real quick. Just help her water the flowers every morning, that's all. When I asked her why she was taking care of the flower beds in the school building when she wasn't in charge of them, she said it was kind of a volunteer work. You know, we have a big flower bed, but not a single flower is blooming, so I felt sorry for it. I wanted to do it, so I asked the teacher if I could do it. I guess even a clumsy girl like her wants to be of use to someone. I'm still trying to figure out what the, this girl is thinking. So I wanted her to know, just out of curiosity. Somehow or another, I ended up coming here every morning to check on, uh, uh, check on her. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta stop spacing out like that. I gotta be careful and not get caught up guard by Metoro-kun again. Psycho seemed to be reflecting earnestly on her habit of going away in her own world. You don't have to react like that every time. I'm just teasing you. That's how clumsy and silly she is. How, how, how silly she is. So she often gets teased by her classmates. She herself seems to admit that it was not bullying, but just teasing. While two of us were making small talk, the chime rang. Oops, home was about to start today. Or start already, rather. Uh, let's hurry to class. As I walked in the doorway and changed my shoes, I heard a rustling sound from behind me, like a stack of paper falling. When I turned around, I saw that a large number of letters had fallen at Psycho's feet. Picking up one of them, she opens it and reads it. <laughs> You're, you got a lot of love letters. You're quite the popular girl, aren't you? Um, 
if you're reading this, you'll be cursed with misfortune. If you don't send this letter to 10 other people within the week, it says. <laughs> okay, oh, never mind. It's just chain letters. Oh, it's just a chain letter. It's a common prank. Metaru kun, what is this? Will I be unhappy if I don't send it? It's not. Don't take it seriously. It's just a common prank, I replied as she breathed a sigh of relief. Oh, well, I thought so. Thank goodness. I thought I was really going to be cursed with misfortune. But more importantly, we got to head to class quickly. She's right. Class is about to start. We hurry to the classroom. Yeah. Behind me, there was a suddenly a loud bang that echoed through the corridor. When I turned around, I saw that Saika had tripped of all her might. Uh, again, this is quite a grandiose way of tripping over yourself. Are you alright? Ow, I tripped over nothing again. Looks like she's having a hard time getting up, so I had no choice to lend her a hand. Oh, thanks, Metaro-kun. When Saiko lifted the hem of her skirt, she saw that her knee was bleeding a little. Uh, I scraped my knee, it hurts. It's more than what you call a scrape. The sooner we get you some proper medical attention, the better. I'm really unlucky, aren't I? She smiled weakly as she brushed the dust from her bottom. Now how can you keep a smile on your face in this situation? I'd be crying if I were you. Your knees look like you just came out of a car accident. Whether she's oblivious or toughing it out, sheesh, that level of toughness is something I've got to respect. Hmm, well instead of insulting her, you know, uh, let's offer her to go to the infirmary. Should I take you to the infirmary? No, I, I can go by myself, it's okay. Sorry I worried you. Sorry for causing you, for always causing you trouble. Michael seemed depressed when her shoulders slumped, so I patted her on the head, ruffling her hair. Why, well, you can't make that I couldn't, I just did my hair buns. I could do the pat her head without worrying that her head buns are coming <laughs> loose because I'm, I'm that much of a bully. Yeah, it tickles. Michael was happy and breaks into a grin. Well, despite her protests, it seems like you can't get enough of these head pads either. You know, every anime girl apparently just really loves head pads. Ah, I took her arm and headed to the infirmary while supporting her body. There's no way I can leave her like this as if nothing had happened. I signaled for her to go as she nodded, her eyes slightly damped. I meant that I couldn't, you know. I think I see a little bit of redness on Psycho's cheeks. Thank you for always saving me. Oh, it's fine, don't worry about it. I replied curtly. Today's not my lucky day as well. Yes, to tell the truth, Psycho is quite the unfortunate girl. She's unlucky from head to toe. She's never been lucky in anything she does. I think ill-fated describes her better than merely being unlucky. It's to the point that you can't believe it's real. <laughs> Isn't there like... I mean, it's kind of a trope, I guess. I think there was um, an anime about that. You know, all about like being unlucky and, lucky and all that. Anyway. I thought it was just a matter of getting injured a lot or having unfortunate things occurring. Mere screw-ups. But it's apparently more than that. Her bad luck doesn't just affect herself, but everyone around her as well. According to the Psycho, she was already like this as far back as she could remember. I didn't think that was possible, but the longer I was involved with her, the more I believed. I'm getting worried about Psycho. I feel sorry for her. It seems so painful. Because it'd be too painful for her to bury it alone. I wish I could protect her from all these calamities. So, feeling this way, I'm watching over her. Kind of reminds me of, uh, as well as, uh, Kobini, you know, from Chainsaw Man. Anyway, uh, after school, today's classes were over and I was getting ready to leave when some people approached me. Oh, hey, it's Nana Shit, I remember you. I guess you're, you're in the, you're in the, uh, you know, you survived the stabbing, as it turns out. Or maybe you're just, maybe you're Psycho Chan, the other Psycho Chan with a wig. I don't know, anyway. Yahoo, thanks for waiting. Metoro, you ready? I looked up and saw a couple. Yo, Metoro, you look as dull as ever today. Oh, okay, so, in, uh, you know? Maybe the NTR route was canon. Anyway, no. Maybe not. I'm assuming in this timeline, you know, I guess we're not a Nana-chan's boyfriend, but rather Yukimaru and Nana ended up together instead. These guys are my childhood friends, Yukimaru and Nana. They're going out. Hmm? Um, you two call me over to come. Uh, what do you come over to call me for? Well, the three of us were supposed to go to karaoke after day, right? Ah, shit. One of my face has ah, shit, <laughs> written all over it right now. When I remained silent, Nana opened her mouth in exasperation. You know, you're not going to tell me you forgot about that, are you? In fact, when I took Psycho to the infirmary this morning, I promised her they'll go to home with her after school. You know, you haven't been hanging out with us lately. If we can't go, why don't you just tell me first? You're causing us trouble. Well, well, Nana, 
Metro has many things to do. Don't get mad. That's not the point. Canceling on the promised day is just the worst, isn't it? In a bad mood, Nana made a hump of her nose and left the classroom. <laughs> Why is she so bitchy lately? Is that time of the month? <laughs> Why is she? Yukimaru is so... Insensitive. Um, Yukimaru spoke up right after Nana was gone. Ah, eh, well, don't worry about it. A follow up. You got things to do, right? Sorry, I'm counting on you. I'll leave it to me. Bro's gotta help each other out. He waved his hand placidly and headed for the door of a relaxed gate. As usual, Yukimaru is a down to earth, reasonable guy. In the past, when Nana and I had often clashed, this guy was all there to intervene. Looking back, all I can really say is thank you to him. I had a good friend, I did. Or, I would say, say k k k k k k k I don't know. <laughs> it's Psycho Channel that's class, right? What? As he leaves, Yukimaru turns around, blurts his nonsense. Well, do your best, I'm rooting for you. I don't like that, I objected. But no matter. He just gave me a quick wink and walked out of the classroom. Alright. I'm not kidding, who could possibly like that ditzy girl, I thought for a moment. No matter how much I say she's not my lover, that's how the people around me perceive it. Well, it can't be helped. Let them say whatever they want. On our way home, we stopped at the park. Psycho and I were sitting side by side on the swings. In the park, small children were laughing and frolicking. A few of them were running around to play a game of tag. It's curse tag. When you touch someone, you spread the curse to them. It was popular back in elementary school, wasn't it? According to her, it wasn't just an ordinary game of tag. I could continue with serious expression. At the time, I thought it was a bunch of crap. So I didn't really react to getting touched. I figured it was all just a game. There's no curse. She's right. It's just a children's game. There's no such thing as a curse. It's not really ridiculous. This is just tag with a different name, isn't it? So, because of that, I must have been cursed at the very end. Having said that, she lowered her hand despondently with a sour expression. I have a little bit of regret. This has been so long since then, I think I've become really unhappy. If I had infected someone else with the curse then, like everyone else, would I have not been so unhappy? In other words, the curse from the curse tag that she plays as a child is still accumulating in her. I mean, had that curse for such a long time. That's why I'm unhappy now, is what she's trying to say. In order for me to be happy, should I have blamed someone else for my unhappiness? Echo stares at me with a serious face. Oh, that stuff's just a game. Maybe I just wanted a reason. Might be an irrational reason, but I want to say it's because of that. Something that shows I wasn't born this way, that's all. But come on, this is too depressing. A little deep sigh before getting up from the swing. In such a situation, why don't we lift our moods by having dessert at a family restaurant? When I put it to her, her eyes lit up. Uh, uh, I want to eat a banana crepe. I, I still don't know how to pronounce that by the crepe? Crepe? Is it crepe? Crepe? You know, I should just... Crepe. Crepe. It's pronounced crepe. Okay. Crepe. She wants a banana crepe. Yeah, that's the spirit. You want a banana crepe. Misfortune and bad luck are attracted to you because you're always looking backwards. That must be it. You know, you're simply, you know... You're simply just focusing in on too much. It's all about perspective. It's all about looking at the glass half full, you know? <laughs> and Julie, just thinking about it. Hey, are you a little kid? Got it all over you. Just how much were you looking forward to it? Our favorite family restaurant is Usa uh, Toria. And it's just a short walk from the park. It's a restaurant for poor students of all menu items being reasonably priced. Usually, I enjoy a wide variety of drinks in the drink bar and then order just one dessert. Then it's settled. Let's head over there before it gets dark. Thinking of that, at the very moment we left the park, right in front of us, I could hear a car horn honking loudly. I... Uh-oh. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Wait a minute. This is, this, this is such a big decision right away. Um... Protected Psycho or did not protect Psycho? What happens if... I don't know. Uh, what happens if we do? I've got to save Psycho. With that one thought in mind, I immediately pushed away with all my might. Right over that, my own body flew through the air in a big arc. Yeah, I knew that was coming. 
I mean, it makes sense. It's all about her having bad luck and how that bad luck affects other people. Anyway, I slam into the ground. My neck, hands, were all bent in a weird way. Humans are more fragile than we like to think. Mentorokun, Mentorokun. When I open my eyes, Psycho is running up to me. No, I don't want you to die, Mentorokun. There's a warm liquid dropping from my head. Now, this is bad. The way she's reacting, I must, I might really be a goner. I thought I had a chance. I guess it's really that bad. I can't really check for myself. Well, why'd you save me? Someone like me. I wish I had died instead of Mitterukun. <laughs> Michael's face was already in a mess from all the crying. I opened my mouth to answer, don't say that, but all that came out was a wish of air. Oh, I see. I guess my lungs gave out already. Damn. Can't begin in some witty last words. <laughs> if possible, I'd hope I wouldn't see your face like this at the very end. Substitute. At least she lives. And everything will be fine after that, right? If you live a fine life, you won't get like post traumatic stress disorder and then end up killing herself as well. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, I guess um, the correct choice is to not protect her. It's just kind of, um, you know, not very intuitive, I feel like, but. All right. Well. It was over in an instant. Psycho, who was supposed to be right next to me, disappeared. I froze, unable to comprehend what had happened. Psycho. She's lying some distance away from me, hit by the car just now. I rushed over to her in a panic. As I picked up her body, Psycho smiled weakly. Psycho, don't die on me! Nah. Huh. Yes, I'm okay, I think. What a relief, she's still conscious. She tried to stand up on her own, but stopped midway through. Huh? It hurts. Can't stand up. Maybe it's a broken bone. My god, I need to get her a doctor right away. When she saw me pull out my phone, she started to panic. Metacrine, are you calling an ambulance? No, please, I can manage my own. Dad be angry with me again, I have to go to the hospital. Is this time to be worrying about that? As blood rushed to my head, Psycho grabbed my arms tightly. Look, see, I'm fine. No problem. There's a fellow. It's okay. This is probably just a bone fracture, that's all. Don't be silly. What kind of idiotic things she's saying at a time like this? I can never try to hold me back and I called the emergency services. And less than five minutes later, an ambulance of Raya took Psycho to the hospital. You know, I, I wonder how the healthcare is like in, in Japan, actually. I don't remember. In Canada, generally speaking, it's covered, you know? If it's like a serious injury, you gotta go to a hospital. Um, though medicine is not, but anyway. But like maybe in Japan, like it's funny how like it's funny she says that, you know, because I, I think the implication is that this has happened many times before. You know, she got injured many times before, like her family needs to pay for the medical bills every single time. And therefore, you know, they lose a lot of money because of that. So, you know, what happens if you don't have a public health care system? All, all, all I gotta say. What a relief. A psycho would be saved. Like imagine like you're like literally dying and it's like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't go to the hospital. It's going to put me in debt, <laughs> you know? Imagine having to live in such a country. Anyway, uh, late at night when everyone should be asleep, I'm sleeping in my room wrapped in a tattered futon. I was awakened by the sound of broken plates coming from the living room. What's going on at this time of night? Did mom and dad come back, I wonder? The two of them always come home late. Actually, I don't know who's narrating this. Hmm. Dad works overtime past 11 p.m. and mom works uh, night shifts. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this is Psycho's perspective. What are you going to do now? We don't even have any savings. Finding what's going on, I opened the sliding door a little bit and took a peek. I can't help it. The turns were unfavorable and I couldn't say no. There's nothing to do about it. If you did job properly, would you, be re you wouldn't be restructured, would you? If you did it well. What the hell? I was doing everything properly. I didn't do anything wrong. Besides, from now on, you're just going to have to make as much money as I do, aren't you? What the hell did you say? You're trying to get me to work even more? I'm already overloaded as it is. Don't just rely on me. All you need is to get a new job as soon as possible, right? What are you talking about? I've done my very best for us up until now. Should I be entitled to a break for a little bit? It's the kind of conversation that makes my head hurt. I couldn't take it any longer, so I closed the door. I crawled back into the hutan and tried to figure out what had happened in my dumb brain. Dad, what's going on at work, I wonder? Restructuring, what's that? 
hold up my phone and look up the meaning of the word. It takes a lot of data bandwidth, so I'm usually careful not to use a lot of data. You know, I've always, I've always been worried about that too, actually. I've actually never had a data plan for the longest time. Because, you know, it costs money. I only use it for times like this. I see, so Dad was forced to quit his job. His family's living expenses were provided by my father's salary. It's hard to imagine how big a loss it was to lose the breadwinner of the family, but a conversation showed how serious a matter it was. Well. Too bad your family is going to go to bankruptcy because you pay for hospital bills. Because you don't share the cost of, a, you know, of simply having a public healthcare system where everyone just would just pay. And then if you share the cost, it would just end up being less overall. But anyway. I don't know. <laughs> Look, I live in Canada. Uh, under the deep bluey, uh, bluey, I keep saying bluey. Under the deep blue starry sky, a woman illuminated by a twinkling star was talking with a girl. Good evening, it's been a long time. Thank you, good evening. Sorry to enter your garden without permission. That's alright. I already informed the guards. <laughs> the guards? You're free to come and go as you please. Thank you very much. I love this garden. There are all these beautiful flowers blooming. When I look at them, I feel at ease. Very much so. <laughs> Thank you. We have a first-rate gardener who takes care of it every day. Is that so? Amazing. I want to be the kind of person who creates such an amazing garden in the future. It seems impossible for me, though. No, please don't say that. I'm sure you can make your dreams come true. Why do you think so? Someone like me? Yes, because I can see you have such a beautiful twinkle in your eye. You will long for beautiful things. You will create very beautiful things. No matter how dirty the circumstances, as long as you never forget your longing, then for sure. What if I forget my longing? It'll be fine. But I've been having trouble keeping up. I keep getting hurt. It's strange things keep happening. I'm always causing trouble to mom and dad. I bring misery to the people around me. I just want to disappear in secret, somewhere no one else knows. I don't make everyone or anyone unhappy. I mustn't have dreams or longings. They shine too brightly for me. It's better for, for me to give them up. It's for the best. For the sake of those who care about me, so... I don't think anyone who cares about you will want that. You don't know it, but these, but those people are surely wishing. Wishing for you to embrace your happiness. Drop that dice. I guess we'll see how this ends in tragedy. Anyway, uh, it's morning. I got ready and headed to school a bit depressed. I arrived at the usual time and took a pee at the flower beds. There's no way you'll be here today, is there? After everything that happened yesterday, of course not. No, no, please, I can manage my own. Dad'll be angry with me again if I have to go to the hospital. I've been stuck on what Psycho said to me. Dad'll be angry with me if I go to the hospital. What the hell does that mean? No, oh, okay, you're privileged. <laughs> it's normal to go to the hat. To a, it's normal to have to go to a hospital after a serious injury like that. It's just common sense. And there's no helping it. I'll take over Psycho's job for now. Not for Psycho's sake. It's because it's not my nature to leave things like, like this. As I recall, all you have to do is fill up his watering can. I mimic the actions she does every day. When I sprinkle the water lightly over the flowers, a small rainbow is formed. Today, there is no one to enjoy this time with me. There's something a little bit lonely about that. I can't believe I'm feeling like this just because she's not at school. Suddenly, I looked towards the school gate and saw a girl coming in late. He's wearing a cast on one leg and is slowly walking crutches. It's Psycho. I was surprised and rushed over to her. Yeah, I met that again. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, are you better already? Yeah, I'm completely fine now. I took her bag and opened the school's front door for her. Thanks, met that yeah, I'm sorry for making you worry, but I managed to get permission to come to school. I'm not supposed to carry anything heavy, so it's kind of inconvenient. She smiles pathetically as if she doesn't care what, about what happened yesterday. Seriously, what kind of mental fortitude does this girl have? I mean, probably a house. Like, you know, it's, it's a very common pattern, by the way, of sharing games, but like, probably it's a house full of uh, abuse, you know, where parents don't care about her. But anyway, that's where that mental fortitude comes from. Is you used, she's used to the abuse. Uh, she was scared that her father would be angry with her, but what happened in the end? What kind of parents would make a fuss about medical bills when their daughter is seriously injured? Probably because it happens a lot, and also, from what we saw in that scene, you know, they don't have a lot of money now. Parents should value their children's lives more than money. I thought that should have been obvious, but I guess not. 
I was curious, but I couldn't bring it up because it felt like a delicate topic. Ah, uh, well, that, uh, that, that's your mistake, Metoro-kun. Whenever you don't do that, that's when it all goes wrong. You know? Around noon, students are heading to their favorite places to sprout the contents of the lunchboxes. In the midst of all this, a dark-haired, slant-eyed girl was already filling her phone with the space behind the gym. A petite girl with short hair comes running up to her. It seems that the two girls arranged to meet here. Okay. You're late. How long do you want me to wait? Sorry I'm late. I'm on day duty today. I don't know anything about that, so stop making excuses. Um, I'm really sorry. Well, Nana-san is Metaru-kun's childhood friend, aren't you? That's right, I'm Metaru's childhood friend. My name is Saiko. I've always been indebted to Metaru-kun. Uh, I know, you can cut the introduction. Uh, yes. Do you have an idea why I called you here? You have no idea, don't you? Sorry, I, I don't know, sorry. Well, I'll make it quick then. Stay away from Metaru. Eh? I'm really sorry. I don't want to say this either, but if it continues like this, misfortune will get to Metaru. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, that's... it's... Everyone who hangs around you has become... become struck with misfortune, is that right? It's a rumor going around school. Or do you have a hand in it? Directly. No, that's wrong. I see. Well, I hope so. I care about Metaro because he's my childhood friend. I'd be sad if he died because of you. Yeah. If you were in my shoes, you understand how I feel, right? I understand, Nana-san. For making you come out and say this, I'm sorry. I don't want to see Metaro kun suffer because of me either. So I won't go near Metaro kun again, I promise. Oh, thanks. Wow, what a bitch. <laughs> you know, Nana-chan Nana, Nana is kind of a bitch in this one. Um, so I hope... I hope you two will be happy together. So sad. <laughs> this, is, this is despair porn, I feel like, sort of, you know? It's like that thing, I, I want, um, what's her face? The blind girl, anime girl on Twitter, you know? Where, like, she gets bullied a whole bunch. I follow that uh, artist because, they, because the art is, like, really good. But, like, it's also, like, kind of like that, you know? Where it's, like, just horrible things keep happening to this character. And you just can't help but feel bad about it, you know? I mean, some sickles might enjoy the bullying, but, you know, I feel like most people just, they just feel sad about it. Um, in some ways, I feel like, well, there's, there's, I feel like there's three kinds of people, you know, there's the psychopaths that actually enjoy, you know, characters being bullied all the time. There's the second type of person who's like, they just feel bad, you know, but they can't look away, you know, which is me, basically. Um, but, you know, the fictional characters anyway. But there's like the third type of person who like, directly like sends hate mail to the artist for drawing stuff like that and it's kind of like that's kind of cringe i don't know man they're just i don't know that they're, they're just trying to draw like art that's trying to convey like a certain situation that is actually kind of realistic you know people don't you know, get bullied every day you know people get ostracized discriminated against it's just a thing that happens in real life you know blaming the artist for like drawing something like that is just like you just it seems like someone who's like privileged has never been bullied before i don't know man or he's never seen bullying anyway <laughs> no, 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 it's not, this is a random rant um uh after school when the sky glows orange at dusk where'd she go i haven't seen psycho since this morning it's not like we promised to meet each other meet, uh, it's not like we promised to meet each other but i was kind of worried and looked anywhere i could think of i'm usually a bit slow on the uptake so i should at least try to help out at times like this the classroom, the courtyard, the flower beds. Ah, she's here. I walked over to Psycho as naturally as I could. As coolly as I could. It was a very casual walk. Mentor her couldn't. I found her looking sad like she's about to start crying. Ah, what now? What kind of misfortune happened this time? Hmm, interesting. Alright, well, I'm gonna save the game. Over here. Um... I guess this is totally the bad wrong choice. I don't want to pick this one. This is horrible. Like obviously I'm so I so want to click on this one. But I also want to see what happens if I click on this one. You know, I, I gotta explore all the possibilities anyway. So I guess we'll see what happens if we pick this one. Um Or maybe that's the right choice. I don't know yet. On YouTube, you know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this, so like no matter what I choose, I'll show the wrong choice first. But anyway. Um okay. Well, as much as I don't want to, like, choose this one, uh, I want to see what happens, so I'm going to click on this. 
I started having some second thoughts about getting involved. I'm probably not as good as a person as I pre pretend to be. I'm just a kid of a parents who support me and take care of me. It's too soon for me to save anyone. When I'm older, when I can protect someone, then I- No! <laughs> oh, what the- I was crushed under a steel girder that fell from the roof of the school building. What? <laughs> it's like the god of this world is like, nope. You get punished for picking that choice. Nope. Instant karma for like, instantly not like, sympathizing with her, you know? Not helping her. She's like, nope. God will destroy you now. Rocks fall, everyone dies. Yeah. Only a, <laughs> only a horrible person will pick this one. Um, alright. Well, obviously, this is the correct choice. This is like, the obvious choice. Sympathize. Good grief. Yada yada. And No, um, good grief, I thought, reaching out to pat her head. No. Suddenly, Psycho pushed me and I fell to the ground my butt. And right afterwards, there was a sound of something clanging. Ouch. Jeez, what did you do that for? When I opened my eyes, I found myself face to face with Psycho, who had fallen on top of me. Heavy, but this might be the first time I've seen her this close. You're always such a scatterbrain, but it's times like this that you don't say anything. When I looked in the direction of the sound, I saw broken pieces of flower pots scattered about. You're not telling me this would have fallen on my head just now. Are you kidding? What would have happened to me if this thing had hit on my head? I don't want to think about it. Eh, I, I can't anymore. She covered her face with her hands, speaking in a voice that sounds like she's about to cry. Put my hand on her, trembling back, and gave her a gentle pat. I don't remind me, there is like a... Uh, there's a manga about this as well. Is there like a manga about someone who's like incredibly... Um, has like bad luck, you know? And it's like... Ends up killing everyone around them. Uh, but then their main like love interest is like um invincible you know like they can't die so like that's kind of like the rom-com there anyway i can't remember the name though i just remember the story all right uh let's see here well i mean we could say i'll save you you'll be okay for sure i mean again it doesn't really matter but you know i think we sound cooler when we say this i'll save you and no matter what i do it's useless as she said this she had tears in her eyes what do you know, Metaru-kun? You don't even know anything, right? Nothing can be done about it anymore. Psycho, Psycho's curse. I'm sure she's been trying her hardest for a long, long time before she met me. The resignation, despair, and disappointment, Psycho had been suffering her whole life. Metaru-kun, I want you to stay away from me. A single sentence pierced my heart. If you don't, you might die next time, Metaru-kun. Like shards of glass, those sharp words pierced my heart. After saying that, she ran away from me. Why did, it end up, why did it end up like this? What did I do that in the end I would become so frustrated? I just wanted to rescue her, save her, that's all. Even just that, would the world not even allow that to happen? The bitter look she gave me at the end is still burned to my eyes. Would I not be able to save her? My own strength is not that much less than the strength of her misfortune, is it? Is it hubris to think I'm going to save her? It's not true. Even if I'm like this, I might be able to save someone, you know? You never know until you try. You don't know the outcome until you try it. Life is fleeting and there's no time to dwell on this. I'm going to talk with Psycho again tomorrow. I'm going to not run after her. I'm just going to talk with her tomorrow. Because, you know, it's like I'm kind of tired. I'm, like, I'm, gonna, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm going to go home. Good morning, Mom. I greeted my mother who was in the living room preparing breakfast. Psycho, your father's lost his, your father's lost his job. My greetings are ignored. I informed them about Dad's restructuring. You were upset yesterday. What should Psycho do? Oh, there's nothing you do about it. The question I asked were quickly dismissed. Things are so bad, I'm gonna have to start working more. Oh no, not even even my salary can't cover it. Muttering darkly, my mother held her hair in despair. Her head held her head in despair. Mom, what if I quit school? And then you have to pay for it, right? When I made such a suggestion, my mother glared at me. What are you talking about? You think that'd be allowed? Go to school. Why? I find that with not going if it helps mom and dad. If you stop going to school, how do you think society will look at us? Yeah. And since then, dad started going to pachinko parlors and spending money as if he'd given up on life. I, I just need to win once, you know? It'll be alright, I'll definitely earn it all back. <laughs> okay, you can freaking dig into pachinko, really? 
Mom isn't poking her face into some strange establishments. She brought home expensive looking vases and statues that look like a mix of animals and uh, humans. Look, Psycho, this is a vase that can help you earn money just by placing it in your house. Okay, she's getting scammed. You know, dad is has a gambling addiction. Mom is being scammed in the pyramid scheme. This statue is the guardian god of some country in the south. If you leave it in your room, it'll bring you happiness. Even though I had a bad feeling about it, I couldn't stop the two of them from going crazy. Can't do anything. I'm no use at all. After a while, people who looked like Yakuza began to frequently stop by my house. They slammed our front door roughly and yelled at us. My father had gone to a pachinko parlor and my mother went to a strange establishment. It was just me in the house right now. I know you're in there. The voices grew louder and louder and I ran to the closet. I covered my mouth with shaking hands and quieted my breathing. Boom, boom, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. The sounds don't stop. Before I knew it, I found myself in tears. How long? How long do I have to live in fear like this? That night, there's a fire in town. The girl stands... Oh, oh actually, this is just a third-party narration? Okay, that night, there was a fire in town. A, guy, a girl stands blankly in front of her apartment, which is burning furiously. Oh. Why? The apartment is surrounded by onlookers, and many screams can be heard. Firefighters are working to put out the fire, but it doesn't appear to be under control. The girl had been standing there looking at the tragic scene, eventually falls on her knees. My, it's my fault. What should I do? She lived in the room on the first floor of that apartment. It seemed that this was the very place where the fire started. Tears overflowed and form drops down, running down from her clear eyes. Mom, Dad, don't leave me. Is it despair in her eyes? Are the remembrance of her deceased parents? Or... Because the parents are dead. Hmm. Learning if this is this happened like during her interactions with her, or maybe it's a flashback. I'm not sure, but hmm. doesn't have any parents. At least, uh, did they have any fire insurance? At least, no. Well, at least I could pay for a bit. I don't know. <laughs> then again, with her luck, you know, getting insurance paid is actually kind of the hard part, really. Um, after my morning routines, I left the house early. I'm gonna have a talk with that girl again today. Then we're gonna pat her in the head until her neatly tied hair is all messed up. I arrive at school in high spirits, you know, not knowing that her her family's dead. Uh, but I couldn't find Psycho at the usual flower bed. Um, Psycho didn't come to school today. I was somewhat out of sorts, so I dejectedly trotted off to class. Suddenly during class, a bad feeling came over me. They tell me she's avoiding me on purpose. If that's the case, I'm quite shocked. I was pretty confident that she liked me. No, she might just be resting today. I bet she is, right? That must be all. It's not like we're lovers, we're barely even friends. They just not care about others very much. Now it's the opposite. I, I can't help but be worried about for psycho. Is it because she's cute? Because if I helped her, I might get something in return. Is it because I'm playing God? Or am I acting cool to boost my ego by trying to help that poor girl? I shook my head fervently. I've got those weird ideas out of my head. It's finally lunchtime. Time seems to go more slowly when the girl's not around. Or that girl's not around. I was curious and asked the person in the next class about Psycho. And it says she often missed classes. I see. So it's just one of those days, is it? I said I didn't know why she took the day off today, so I didn't get to know the details, but just knowing that was a big help. It looks like Psycho-chan took the day off. I heard from the guy next door. Yukimaru calls out to me in his usual tone of voice. He was still as smug and snobby as ever, and he put his way against the wall. What happened, I wonder? So you don't know either, huh? I thought you might have heard something from the person herself. <laughs> what the hell, man? Don't tell her you know more than I do. I'm a little peeved. Did you know that there was a fire near the Usatoria yesterday? Come to think of it, the guys in my class were talking about that rumor this morning. As I recall, a fire broke out on the ground floor of a wooden apartment building or something like that. I only heard about it from the others, so I don't know if it's true or not. But they were saying that it was Psycho's place that burned down. As soon as I heard those words... My brain stopped thinking for a moment. Eh? What? What the hell? Before I could even start thinking, I was already running out of the classroom. I have to confirm it. It's the only thing driving me right now. Thinking about it, I could have made a phone call, but somehow my body acted first before my head. It took me tens, several tens of minutes to get there, and the place was swarming with onlookers. The apartment where a psycho lived had been cruelly burned to a crisp. In such a condition, people can't, li can't live there anymore. What happened? Psycho, where's Psycho? Is she alive or...? With trembling hands, I put on my phone and called her. 
The number you have dialed is not available right now. My chest is filled with a sense of despair and helplessness, and my phone slipped out of my hand. The phone fell to the ground, the screen cracked a little. I couldn't connect. Don't tell me, she really is... Why, isn't this too much? I couldn't confirm her safety and several days passed by in a blur. Well, it's... Uh, mm, I don't know. And it's a little dramatic irony because we do know she survived the fire, but... Well... A few days since then. After class, I left the school and headed straight home. Ever since I lost Psycho, I couldn't get in the mood to do anything. I couldn't calm down. Even though Nana and Yukimaru invited me to play, I didn't feel like it. So I turned them down. On a dimly lit road, gazing at my shadow cast by the setting sun, I continued step by step. I bumped into a stranger and almost fell over, but that didn't matter. There was a gust of wind and I looked up. I couldn't believe my eyes when I spotted a familiar girl across the road. Psycho? The girl had a blank expression on her face. She was hunched over and trudging along. <laughs> oh, nice dress. <laughs> what happened to her? Did she join the Yakas? Or <laughs> I don't know, because the Yakuza was like, you know... Hounding her family, right? So, hmm. I hadn't seen her for a few days, so not much should have changed, but there's something decidedly different about her. She was dressed from head to toe in a black mourning clothes. Oh, okay, wow, well, okay, that's the It's a funeral. I, I, that, didn't cro I don't know, that didn't come across my mind. That's not my first thought, I guess. I just thought it was fancy. I don't know. Um, Psycho! I quickly ran over to her without thinking, hugged her body with my two hands. Uh, it hurts, Metarakun. I was worried about you. I really thought you were dead, and I... As I said it, I felt like, like my tears were about to overflow. I'm sorry, but we had a promise. You shouldn't come near Psycho again, right? I won't recognize that. I don't remember I don't remember making any promises like that. I glared at her strongly. She gave me an uneasy look. Are, are you angry? I'm, me too. I wanted to see Metarakun as well. But Nana... Nana... Why is that freaking bitch? I'm gonna freaking beat the shit out of her. No. <laughs> Why is her name brought up? She's not related to this, is she? She she told me not to see Mentorokun anymore, so I can't meet you anymore. At that moment, my hands were shaking with anger. I, I did the Arthur, you know, the Arthur meme? His fist, like he turns to a fist. I couldn't even find the words anymore. Unforgivable. Simply unforgivable. Look, I choose for myself who I get involved with. Not Nana, me. When I told her that, she gave me a small nod and her eyes tearing up. That being said, why was Psycho wearing morning clothes? Don't tell me. Hmm. I'm gonna choose this. I don't know what it means though. Oh, okay. Mom and Dad got caught on fire and... It's my fault. Metarukun, what should I do? I cause trouble for people just by being alive. Tears started to well up in Psycho's eyes. It'd be better if I wasn't around. It'd be better if I died instead. Okay, so what it means is like, her bad luck is what it means. Which is kind of true, I guess. <laughs> don't say such ominous things. There's no such thing as being cursed with bad luck. I don't believe in superstitions. No one would be sad if I died anyway. Even after hearing my passionate words, she remained depressed. Hey, if I'm dead, will Met Metarokun be sad? Will you cry for my sake? <laughs> Why, there's blood in your mouth? What? Blood pours out of Psycho's mouth. Uh, hey, Metrokun. I didn't realize it at the time. I love you. I never thought that would be her last words. What? <laughs> How, what? <laughs> Suicide by taking poison? Hmm. It really does feel like, yeah, sometimes the choices you make in, in these routes. It's, it's kind of like, um... How do you say... Retroactive? I don't know if that's the right word, but you know, like the it's like kind of dependent on what you choose. It kind of like, um, what's the word for that actually? It, it changes what actually happened in the past, if that makes sense. You know, like Schrodinger's cat or whatever. You know, it's like, mm, like uh, retro uh, retroactive continuity, uh, retcon. That's what it is. Yes, uh, that's what I'm trying to find. That's the word I'm trying to find. Um, sometimes the game retcons itself a little bit. When you pick a certain choice, you know, it seems like that's what it seems like to me, anyway. Well, I mean, obviously she's in funeral clothes because you're sending those two people off. Yeah, it's my mom and dad's funeral today. With a vacant expression on her face, Psycho looked down at the ground. Her parents died in a fire. 
and only Psycho was saved. Was this also the doing of her misfortune? The power of misfortune that engulfs those around her. If you look closely, I can see that Psycho's cheeks seem to be gone to them before. I can't say anything. I just watched her in silence. I'm sure that my cliched words can't describe her suffering. I know you're worried about me, so thank you, but I'll be fine. Seeing the worried look in her face, or looking, uh, seeing the look of worried look in my face, she loosened her mouth into a grin. She might think she's laughing like she always does, but I can tell she's pushing herself. I've always been like this, so <laughs> I don't know why, but this seems normal to me now. There's no way you're okay. It'd be crazy to lose your parents and be okay with it. You don't need to force yourself with me. No way. She made expression as if she got caught lying. This is why... This is why I'm so useless. Because I'm insecure because I have low self-esteem. can't even smile properly. Really, I'm so dumb. She might have feel self-deprecating uh, words are painful to hear. I couldn't do anything but watch psych uh, Psycho as she became a shell of her former self. Okay. Where does she live now? She's homeless? She's just gonna... I don't know. Okay, I don't know. In the business hotel room. I'm assuming this is her? I'm not sure. In the business hotel room, I was lost in thought. Mom and Dad. They both died leaving me alone. They were burnt to death. <laughs> they both left me. Now you don't need to worry about anything. That's not fair. I'd leave them too if I could, but I couldn't do it. I had nowhere to go as I lost my home. I had no relatives who would help. Of course, no relatives would take me in. My relatives hated me, saying I was a cursed child. I was only natural. I have no home, no money, no family, nothing. The only thing left is a huge amount of debt left from my mom and dad. Technically, that's illegal. Um, you can't transfer debt to other family members. As far as I know, anyway. I, mean, I guess it depends on the country, but as far as I know. So if anyone tries to, like, um, basically, like, uh, collect debt from your dead family members or dead relatives, uh, say that you can't do that. You literally can't do that. It's illegal. You know, they sort of can, you know, they can, if you agree to it, then you end up paying. But as long as you say no, you know, then they can't do anything about it. Like, what are they going to do? Unless they're Yakuza, I guess. Unless they're the mafia, I guess they could like, you know, explode your kneecaps. But I mean, either way, I guess paying the, you know, the, th the problem with dealing with the mafia is that <laughs> whether or not you do like. You listen to their uh, requests, I guess, or not. You end up associating with them, and that's not a good thing anyway. So you, that's the thing about loan sharks in particular, that uh, you end up paying forever, you know? Like, you, you, you never stop paying because they jack up the interest rates illegally. You can't get out of it because you somehow associate yourself with criminals, right? So anyway, uh, I could probably have chosen not to inherit it, but I didn't. I was afraid I would lose my place in the world. Without any relatives, only they would take care of me. I was put in the care of the, of the debt collectors. <laughs> okay. I inherited the debts of my parents, and this body of mine would be used to pay the debts. Oh, man. That, okay. Well, what's going to happen to me? Metaro Kun, I'm scared. Help me. I'm heading to the city tomorrow. Seems like I'll be forced to work at that place in that town. I haven't been told what kind of job it is yet, but I'm sure it's not a good job. Nightlife entertainment. Cabaret, sex industry. These words that I felt like I had no connection to came to mind. No matter what the job is, I have no choice but do it now. I can't escape to have paid off all my debts. Well, that's the thing about human trafficking is that you'll never pay off your debts. Girl. So, like, you'll actually never escape it is a thing. So don't, like, <laughs> don't inherit illegal debts from, like, criminals. Don't do it. It's a bad idea. The enormous debt the two left behind. Somehow I thought it was someone else's problem. It never came to mind that I would have to pay it all back on my own. I had such a naive idea that mom and dad would be responsible for paying it back. I was still just a child. Well. I don't know if we can save her from illegal prostitution. I don't know if metaro -kun can do this. I don't know. Uh, out of the deep blue starry sky, a woman illuminated by the twinkling stars was talking with a girl. Happiness. What is happiness anyway? My family's poor and so sometimes I wish I had more money. I feel like it's not, it's not just about having lots of money. Is that really enough to say I'm happy? Just living a life of luxury. I've also heard that when your life is well provided for, you'll feel quite satisfied. <laughs> Isn't that... 
up to each person to decide? Please tell me, I can't figure it out on my own. I'm sorry. I can't tell you about that. Just as others cannot know what is your happiness, you cannot know my happiness. The answer lies only within you, my dear. Well, I guess I'll just look for myself. But I don't know. What is it I'm looking for? What is it I want? I wonder if one day I'll find it when I grow up. Yes, there's plenty of time. There's no need to rush, dear. I've been searching for it too, just like you. What is it that fills your heart with true satisfaction? I met someone, and at the end of a long journey, I found him. So, what was your happiness, Ninninisan? Well, in one of her endings, Nenina's happiness is a little different, but anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah, here's another, here's another girl from the previous game, by the way. I guess it's, it's kind of like Easter eggs, really. I don't know, because these games are, not, are, are Dice Psycho is not super, I feel like, not directly related to uh, uh, Menhera Reflesia. I always say that word wrong. Um, but I guess there's some references. I don't know. My happiness is something that is without form. All this time, it was so close. So close, I didn't even notice it. The happiness has always been there? Yes, I'm sure it's the same for you, isn't it? It's always so close to us that we don't realize how important it is. You only know how precious it is when you lose it. Well. When we see the girl, though, from the previous game, usually that means it's time... For bad things to happen as the dice explodes into blood. Once again, the cast is dying. Or the die is cast? <laughs> I, I said it the wrong way. The die is cast. I'm tired after everything that's happened today. I crawled in the covers and closed my eyes. What the heck? Anyway, I'm glad Psycho's unhurt. I'm glad she's alive. I might not be doing anything specific to help, but just being alive should be a happy thing. It's not a misfortune to be alive. As long as you keep on living, you'll be happy someday, right? You don't give up, for sure. Just as my consciousness was drifting off to sleep, I suddenly heard what sounded like a tap on the window. Maybe the wind blew a pedal against the window. Whatever, let's just get some rest for today. What? It isn't a thief, is it? But sure enough, I heard it. A sound tapping on the window. I anxiously walked over the window, opened the curtains. Psycho. She smiled when her eyes met. I hurriedly put on my jacket and sandals and went outside. Psycho was waiting in front of the house to smile apologetically. Apologetically. I'm sorry you're coming at this hour. Were you asleep? Hope I didn't wake you. It would be a shock. I just want to take a moment to say my last farewells. I have a, a bad feeling about her words for a pack of meaning. Oh well. Yeah, I'm going to leave this town. So, I won't be able to see you anymore, Mr. Kun. He utters a statement that I won't, don't want to believe. There's no way you can convince me of something like that all of a sudden. I'm going to a place of some uncle I don't know, in an unknown city, working on some unknown star. There, they'll take care of me. Okay, she's not going to mention the prostitution, by the way. She's. <laughs> I don't know. Uncle I don't know. Unknown city, unknown star. My feeling of unease is getting stronger and stronger. What's up with that uncle? Who is he? An unknown city, unknown star? Exactly what's going on? I don't even know. I have the right to know that. Thank you for everything up to now, Mr. Kun. Ignoring my questioning gaze, Psycho continued. It's so, so much, so much fun together with you, Metarukun. She was talking desperately in a shaking voice, fighting back tears. Seeing the tears well up in her eyes, I felt like doing the same. We watered the flower beds together, made rainbows, and flowers bloomed. Every day was shining and bright. I'm glad I talked to you that day, Metarukun. I'm glad I met you. My whole life has been nothing but misfortune. But I got to meet Metarukun. That's the one thing I'm truly happy about. We meet again sometime. Let's have... Uh, banana uh, crepes together. I. Well. Mm, I mean, <laughs> I know what sh I know which choices that I would choose, but oh, I don't know. Okay, well, what happens if I if I pick this? I want to see. Oh, please be well. All right, have good luck with your unknown uncle, or whatever. It's not, it's just probably gonna get, she's on top of the prostitution, she's probably gonna get like addicted to drugs or something, I don't know, it happens a lot in human trafficking actually, because they, you know, they often like to get their uh, sex workers addicted to drugs, and like, dependent on them, and then therefore, have a, you know, they die early, anyway, um, please do well. Even if you go to an unknown city far away from here, even if you never see me again, 
hearing this, Psycho hung her head. She remained motionless for a while, her expression completely unreadable. Metaruken, you'll help me, won't you? She mumbled something and then walked up to me. Because the other day you told me that you were worried about me, and you wanted to save me, didn't you? Oh, okay, no. It happened now. Here we go. Touch! Uh-oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. And she said that she firmly touched my shoulder. <laughs> it's curse tag. Psycho will give her curse to Metaro-kun. What do you mean by that? What are you mad about, Metaro-kun? You said yourself that such games are silly and are nothing but superstition. So it's okay, right? Since it's just a game of curse tag. Yeah, oh, thank goodness. Now I don't have to go through all that scary stuff anymore. Sorry, and thanks, Metaro-kun. <laughs> uh oh. From that day on, I suffered countless misfortunes. I lost my parents, the company I worked for was in trouble, I got fired, became homeless, and now I'm on the verge of death, struggling for food every day. How many years have passed since the day she infected me with her misfortune? Now I'm about to be murdered for no apparent reason by people I don't even know. I hid myself in a narrow alley, hoping that I won't be found in here. It sounds like a lie, it does, but I'm definitely in a life or death situation right now. Some crazy guy is trying to kill me. As I told you, misfortune is contagious. The curse is real after all. In front of me stood a familiar looking woman. Hey, long time no see, Metaruken. <laughs> okay, she's gonna like... What? <laughs> Remember me? I'm Psycho, your classmate back in high school. Uh, Psycho, did you come to save me? To return the favor back when we were still students. Mm, I'm not unhappy anymore since I passed on the curse to Metaruken. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Did Metaruken take all the bad stuff away from me? Or maybe Metaruken was born under a star misfortune from the beginning. I don't know. Huh? I reach out my worn, dirty hands to Psycho who's giggling. Please help. No, don't touch me. Your misery is contagious. She said in a cold voice I couldn't imagine coming from the Psycho I once knew. You didn't reach out to me when I was in trouble, did you, Metaruken? You just told me to be well, right? Now, I'm super happy doing well. Metaruken, aren't you glad your wish came true? Then she left with a narrow smile on her face. What a vindicative bitch. <laughs> okay. As I get stabbed to death. Good. Great. Wow. Cool. Turns out, you know, when she isn't like the victim anymore, she acts quite like, the, like an asshole. Isn't it always like that? You know? People always kind of act like the victim, but once they're not the victim anymore, then they start being the victimizer. You know? Anyway. Um, well. Alright. So, I mean... I mean, obviously, we don't want her to go away. So, I will try to save her. Even so, I... I still want to save Psycho. I'd hug her petite body tightly with both hands. Metaro-kun? I want to save her. I'm the only one who can do it, just me alone. You can't, Metaro-kun. You should quickly leave me. If you're with me, even Metaro-kun will be misfortune uh, misfortunate too. I'll burden you again. Metaro-kun might even die this time. I definitely don't want that. It doesn't matter to me. I'll risk my life and everything I have to save you. I'm not leaving you until you become happy for sure. A lot of my tears spit from her eyes and ran down her face. Even if we are burned together in the flames of hell, I'll stay by your side. Despite my turquoise hair, I guess. Is it turquoise? Or, I don't know what kind of color it is. Anyway. Alright. Oh, it just ends there. Interesting. I mean, <laughs> if I had to guess, they do eventually die because I'm assuming the curse is real. But yeah, you know, as it turns out, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how canon the bad endings are. Yeah, I'm thinking the bad endings are not always canon. Um, but definitely, I don't know. I, uh, I was gonna say it's more grounded, actually. You know, compared to the last route I did, which was, I guess, number six. Uh, this one's number five, I guess. The unlucky girl. I'm just thinking about the bad endings, and they're mostly grounded. I mean, other than the fact that the there's the bad ending where, uh, as it turns out, the curse tag was real, which I don't know, you know, is it meant to be a joke or not? But like, 
At least in that ending, it was real, and then she passed it on. I guess. Or like, maybe it's just symbolic, I don't know. Is The idea is that, you know, despite her suffering, you just kind of like, eh, you just, you kind of just like step away in the last minute, and so therefore, it's like karmic retribution that you get all the bad luck instead. And then you, you switch positions basically, and she's like, haha, <laughs> get wrecked. <laughs> I don't know. You, bet you know, you betray her, she betrays you, you know? Anyway. But let's see, so what happens after that? I mean... Since that day, a few years have passed since Psycho and I eloped. We escaped from the debt collectors pursuing us, and although we weren't rich, we had a peaceful life. Today, we decided to go a bit further than usual to visit a flower garden. Going, uh, going to the place where Psycho's favorite pink flowers bloomed. I took out a small case from my pocket. I held out the engagement ring in front of her. My mind was already made up. She burst into tears and smiled the happiest smile I'd ever seen. You know... I was once told I could never be happy. It's funny, but it was not completely wrong. A chosen life of misery. I'm sure if someone really wanted to be happy, if they really wanted to get out of their misery, they could do so in a heartbeat. But I make myself unhappy, you see. I don't want to be a bother to anyone, so I just wanted to die. The people who want to die really just want people to, or really just want someone to help them, don't they? I just wanted someone to find me before I die. Because once you die, you can't even do that. Because it's really over then. Okay, well, she's loud. You know? She's uh, she's different. Looks looks older, I guess, is the idea. Uh, it's just two of us on the station platform, waiting for the train home. The train's late. Maybe because we're in the country. When we get home, let's have dinner. Hey, what do you want to eat? I got to the point where I can hold, hold silly and trivial conversations with her. We got to know each other so well that we didn't even joke around. She still has the same misfortune disposition as ever, but it's not so bad to the point of being deadly. Metoro-kun, if I said I want to die, would you die with me? There's no real choice. <laughs> I can't pick that. Just kidding. It's a lie. Were you surprised? I won't say stupid things like that anymore. Because you're here with me now, Metoro-kun. Right now, I'm so happy. I'm just, I'm just waiting for it. Uh-oh, what? Cool, great. That was an interesting animation. The art style changed completely. Alright. <laughs> well, that was like very surreal. I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, I was expecting that though. I was like, you know, she's the happiest part of her life. Obviously, you know, she's going to die pretty soon. At the height of her happiness. You know, I had to guess. But I told you already. We don't have any money for healthcare. Hey, cut it out. Look where you are. Everyone's looking at you. I don't want that daughter of mine. I don't care if she dies. I can't afford her. What the hell are you saying? That's our child you're talking about. Our treasure? I don't care. I don't remember having a child like that. Enough, dammit. Stop talking about money. Why don't you stop gambling it all the way instead? Shut up. The only day you bought a strange rather cost a million yen, too. It's a holy right to get track and save up money. Look like you're wasteful spending. Mom and Dad are we're having a dispute about my medical expenses. The sounds came from my out outside uh, my hospital room. Even though they were in the hallway, their voices echoed all the way to here. All this happened just because I got hit by a car and broke my arm. Please stop it. Please stop, Mom and Dad. Seeing me in tears, the nurses all expressed their pity. A psycho child, I'm so sorry for you. The parents like that. Yeah, a child doesn't get to choose their parents, do they? It felt good to have people look at me with pity. I know it's weird, but I'm strange like that. I know I shouldn't be having these inappropriate thoughts, but... It's such an irresistible pleasure to be looked at with pity. Here I am, poor little me. Come look at me, people, and be kind to me. I want to be pampered. Yes, I'm in love with my pitiful self. That's why I play this role, no matter how much I'm laughing in my heart. I'm trying so hard to hold in my laughter and play the poor little needy psycho. One evening, when everyone was fast asleep, I made sure that mom and dad were asleep in their bedroom. Already, you two are not needed anymore. So I set the tattered carpet in my house on fire and left. Okay. Hmm. True happiness. Well, I guess that, that that's the twist, you know. 
I think that that's the biggest twist that her misfortune was actually, at least canonically anyway, because it seems like the bad ending sometimes are not really canon. But like in the, in the canon true route, I guess I say true, happy end route, whatever it is. Um, it seems like all of her misfortune was actually self-inflicted. She just had an addiction to like people feeling bad for her and she liked playing the victim. You know, so it really is in a way despair porn. Um, anyway, you know. Like for her anyway so maybe that uh, I, I guess that kind of explains a lot i guess um and the reason why she i'm assuming committed suicide as well um even though it's a really weird animation <laughs> but like and very surreal but like at, at the end there you know she, she i'm assuming she walked into the train uh precisely you know because of that right she she like fell in love, quote unquote, with uh, Metarokun, but she was also addicted to like people feeling bad for her and stuff. So it's only when she was at the most happiest that she decide to cause the, 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 the most amount of despair for her and the, those around her as well, you know? Very... Well, it reminds me of a certain character from a certain game that I like, but anyway. So I think that, yeah, that's the twist. So that that's what was broken about her, I guess. Well, I imagine maybe that's not the entire reason. You know, I feel like uh, again a lot of a lot of uh, sharing games. I mean, I mean, in particular, I guess just like uh, Men Have Rafflesia, like the previous game. A lot of these girls are just doing it to like, uh, uh, like to, to 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 cope, I guess, with general feelings of depression. <laughs> you know, feelings of depression, suicidal thoughts, things like that. So I I imagine she wasn't you know like that the entire time. You know, that's not her main motivation. To, like make people feel bad for her but you know she can't help it you know and despite feeling bad she still does it right i think that's, that's part of it as well like on, on, on one hand like bad things happen to her but on the other hand um she's she feels like you know it's like uh like she she feels pleasure from it i guess i don't know anyway um but yeah very really, yeah, inter interesting mm, i don't know interesting it, it also seemed like you know for the most part it actually did seem like it was kind of like a typical tragic uh, love story you know basically almost at the end there you know, they almost got you you know at the end there where everything actually almost turned out fine but as it turns out that's not what she wanted from the very beginning she wanted tragedy i guess i don't know i'm assuming anyway um but like you know the whole thing about her like feeling sad you know and just like whatever it's, again, kind of twisted, you know. I think maybe she did have a crush on Metaro or whatever, but at the same time, she wanted uh, him to pity her the entire time. You know, she she didn't want anything else. Just she just wanted pity. Just wanted him to feel bad for her. And if she doesn't get that, you know. Then you know, it's a lot colder, I guess. That's I think that's why her expression at the end there, you know, was very blank as well, because uh, the relationship might not be like completely one hundred percent true, you know. He wasn't like completely 100 percent honest with him about her like situation but anyway uh but yeah at least that's what i got from that maybe not i'm not sure anyway so there you go Inter interesting story so far i gotta say you know they're not really typical i feel uh, to me anyway they're not very typical cliche yandere tropes really um there's some tropes here and there i, I mean her, her the fact that she's like very unlucky you know that's an interesting thing but like they kind of play with it you know but there you go. Well, I guess we'll see uh, what happens next with the next anime girl. You know, what do we, what does she have in store for us? I guess we'll see.